Hello, my name is Brian Davis with Brick or Bracket Software, and this is a tutorial on how to build an array driven site. Um, the files are uploaded to the blog, and if you need to follow along with this tutorial, uh, you can watch this video. Hopefully, this will give you some information on how to use the site. Um, this tutorial is written in ActionScript 2. There will be another one written in ActionScript 3, and also one using external data. In the first frame here, we have um, a basic stop action, and we have also um, an enter frame event that is uh, called on this, which is the root of the Flash movie. Pretty basic. Um, we declare a, a number variable um, that's equal to um, basically um, the amount of data that's loaded divided by the amount of data that we have total times 100. Um, we have a feedback um, movie clip feedback text, I'm sorry, on the stage. And basically, if the percent equals 100, we delete the enter frame event and go to and play frame two. Uh, frame two is pretty simple as well. Uh, we just import the Fuse classes. And if you don't know what Fuse is, you can see the blog. You have to install these classes, um, the, um, the Fuse MXP um, file, and restart Flash in order to take advantage of these classes. We import these classes and we also set up um, do a simple setup um, with the Zio engine. If you don't know what any of this is, um, there's lots of documentation on mosesupposes.com slash fuse. And finally, we come to the meat of the application where we have our array of objects and um, all of our functions that help to drive the site. Now, um, this site is driven by an array of objects. This array usually would be um, serialized by an outside XML document. But for this sample, we're not doing that. We're just going to keep it really, really simple. And we create a, an array called Available Dentist. Um, now, you might ask the question, why are we using Dentist? Um, it's just because um, when I taught the class, there was a young lady who was interested in making a site for a dentist office. And so we decided to use the metaphor of available or unavailable dentist. Um, the first array, the first object that we have in this array, uh, kind of give us an example of what we're looking at. Um, that object goes from here to here. And there's a lot of gobbledygook text inside here, some from the big spaceship website. Sorry, big spaceship, but you know, just get, needed some text somewhere. Okay. So this curly brace to this curly brace denotes an object. This curly brace to this curly brace denotes an object. And this curly brace to this curly brace denotes an object. And then finally, this curly brace to this curly brace denotes an object. We have four objects in the site, in this array. And the array is from this brace to this brace. So this is an array of objects. An array simply being a list, and this is a list of objects. In each object, we have um, one name variable, uh, an office variable, an accepting new patients variable, an ID variable, and a bio variable. The bio variable is kind of what makes this thing look really big. But without that bio variable there, um, um, it would look a lot smaller um, as far as you know the look of the data. We can delete it and you can see the object is right here. Okay, so I'm going to put that back. Oops, okay. So, name, Dr. Sierra, is a string variable. Office, West Sacramento. Accepting new patients is a Boolean variable equals true. The ID, okay, all in lowercase is Sierra. And the bio um, is, of course, a string. All these words right here. Okay. Um, so, after that, we have a function here called display dentist. We have a for loop right here on line six. And if you don't understand what a for loop is, here's a really, really simple way to understand it. The var i, the var i equals zero, i being a number, and the i is less than available dentist.length denotes the start and the end of the for loop. The i plus plus denotes how we're, going to, how we're going to increment through the for loop. And a for loop basically is saying, do this action over and over again until this statement right here does not evaluate anymore. 
Okay? Inside the curly brace is going to be the actions that get executed inside the for loop. So this for loop goes from here, okay, from line 6 to line 21. Okay, the first thing we do is we set up a pointer variable, my ID. Okay, since we're using ActionScript 2, we don't, need to, we don't need to declare our variables. We can just start using them. And I just kind of take advantage of that shortcut right here. So my ID equals available dentist I dot ID. Now remember our available dentist array, all right? Um, basically, the I, uh, um, the I is going to take the place of any number that we put inside here. So the first time that we go through this for loop, I is going to equal zero. And um, available dentist braces zero dot ID is going to give us back Sierra. The second time, it will give us back Jordan. And the third time, it will give us back Brian. The fourth time, it will give us back Sarah. So remember, all your arrays are zero based. So basically, this my ID variable, which is a string, is going to get set in this for loop. Oops. So the attached movie is going to take um, Doctor Holder, okay, which is in our library linked up. It's going to rename it after my ID. Then it's going to get next highest depth. Um, it's going to call the get next highest depth method in order to get the depth of the movie clip. Then it's going to use the init object, okay, to to tell the Flash movie where to put the um, the new clip on the x axis. And notice we have an equation here. The equation basically is i times 260, which is the width of our doctor holder plus about 10. Great. So then we load, uh, do a load movie into the JPEG, uh, a load movie into um, our newly curated um, um, doctor holder with its unique name. And then we run an on nature frame function to um, do, make the preloader on each one of those pictures that's loaded. Okay. We go through here and we do a lot of stuff to um, that um, doctor holder. But what I want you really to understand here is that this braces my ID, okay, equates to the new movie clip we just put on the stage. Because when my ID appears inside those braces, it's going to evaluate it as an object. You have to have a path name in front here. But once you say this braces my ID, the first time through it's going to be it's going to look for the movie clip named Sierra. The second time through, it's going to look for the movie clip called Jordan. The third time through, it's going to look for the movie clip called Brian. And the fourth time through, it's going to look for the movie clip called Sarah. Now, in our doctor holder, there is a built-in clip that we made inside there called, my, uh, called pick underscore MC. And you can do the load movie there. So that's why I really want you to understand about these files. Um, um, I'm going to do another part two to this movie. But I, I don't want this movie to become too long. So take that information, try exploring, and I will put a part two video up really soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.